What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Niners News here on 49ers Hive. I'm joined by Matt Llewellyn. Matt, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Zach. How are you? Doing good, doing good. And I'm also joined by Anthony Perry. Anthony, how are you doing? What's going on, Zach? What's going on, Matt? Ready to ball out with Niners talk. All right. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Uh, Matt, do you think the 49ers made a mistake by not addressing uh, their defensive back position in the draft? You know, it depends on how you look at it, because a lot of people forget they they drafted a guy last year, Tim Harris, who basically got a medical red shirt. Um, they have guys that they feel comfortable with coming back. But to me, I do feel that at some point they should have addressed it, especially they had an opportunity. Uh, I think it was around four or five to take Bryce Hall. They passed on him um, and went in a different direction. I think they got um, McAvitt's. Um, Mikovitz, I'm, I'm Mikovitz. sorry if I'm butchering your name, brother. Um, but they, they decided to go in that different direction. And it's one of those things where Richard Sherman's not getting any younger. And even if he plays at a high level, he's in the last year of his contract. You have Akella Witherspoon entering a critical contract year, and you hope he plays up for that contract. And, you know, he's in the last year of his contract. Kwan Williams, last year of his contract. You got all these guys that are that are coming up on the end of their contract. You have Jimmy Ward. It, can he stay healthy for a full season? Last year was pretty much the first. So, you know, you're looking at all these moving pieces, and you're you're really close to a Super Bowl, and you're hoping that defensive line can kind of cover some of your warts up. But I do feel that they could have addressed it in a way that didn't cost too much. That wasn't too um, cost. Uh, prohibitive to kind of at least ensure that you have bodies there for for you know the next couple years and people want to talk about undrafted free agents but there's no guarantee they make the roster you know for every Emmanuel Mosley there's 15 guys whose name you'll never know and who you'll never see on an NFL field so I think that's kind of a you know a weak way to try to restock yourself Um, but you know it's kind of baffling to me that they address positions where they had strengths and they had pieces and neglected the one area where most people would say, yeah, that's where they're weakest. Yeah, that, that's that was kind of my main problem, I guess, with this draft is that people are saying that. Um, I've had people tell me on Twitter that they, you know, addressed bigger holes and they kind of left the secondary. They're, they're trusting the, the guys that they have this year. However, I don't think you could argue that taking Javon Kinlaw filled a bigger hole than if they took somebody who could have played secondary, uh, excuse me, in the secondary. And I know, you know, um, the the top two corners were gone. Sure, that's fine. But they could have traded back. They could have made things happen. I think that they did make a mistake by not addressing the secondary. Um, I know the 49ers played really, really well for the majority of the Super Bowl, but they ultimately got beat because of their secondary. Um, you could obviously make the case holding. I'm not getting into that right now, but they got beat deep. Sherman got burnt. Yep. Um, you know, he got burnt the week before that or two weeks before that in Green Bay as well. So there's just, there's no excuse. Mo- Mostly to- had mostly had the busted coverage against uh, Tyreek Hill, I believe right, it was, yeah. where, yep. where Tyreek just ran through his zone and nobody yep. picked him up. Exactly. Tyreek and then, and then Watkins too. So it's just like, you know, they... The 49ers had all the reasons in the world to address their secondary in the draft, and they chose not to. Um, Anthony, why do you think they didn't do that? And and first of all, do you think they made a mistake as well? Are you in agreement with me and Matt? I'm in agree- agreement. Agreement? I'm in agreement <laughs> with you guys. But I'm going to play a little devil's advocate here. I think that because guys like Kwan Williams, Akella Witherspoon, and even Sherman – who like Sherman's on the decline, Weatherspoon's kind of averaging out. We don't know what his ceiling is. We kind of see, we kind of think we know what his floor is as a corner, but not too much his ceiling. And we know K1 is kind of relegated to slot duty. So you guys are going to get, you guys are going to understand what I'm about to get into. I think when it comes to the DB room, the Niners have all the leverage when it comes to re-signing these guys back. Sherman knows his value is declining because of his speed. Akello knows his inconsistency is going to cost him money. k knows that his slot duties are going to only relegate him to a certain amount as a cornerback because he's so limited. And obviously, Emmanuel Mosley is a restricted free agent, but that's, that's a little different. The point being, though, is that I don't think they necessarily addressed it because I feel like they think they can get at least two of those guys back on – fairly team-friendly contracts because of how they've played. And you guys know that their defense, our defensive line has really saved their play as cornerbacks because they've been able to play behind 
the best defensive line in football on top of some of the best defensive coaches in football. So to say that the rest of the team is saving their butts, pardon my language, I would say that's happening. So, and and what I'm trying to say is the Niners hold the leverage against these guys in the sense that they can bring them back on team-friendly deals. And even if Akello has another average season, but it's not average to where you think you're in a position to upgrade, I think they can bring him back on a friendly two- or three-year deal. The same thing with k He shouldn't be that cheap because he's a slot corner. I think he's, what, 28 years old, 29 years old? He's, he's getting a little bit up there in age, too. And we could see him come back on a team-friendly deal. Mosley is probably going to get tendered, so he'll be on a one-year contract. And really, it's up to Sherman if he either wants to move to safety because uh, Tchaikovsky Tart is going to be done. Sherman might not be a good strong safety, but the point being is that he can make that transition. Jimmy Ward can play strong safety. He's kind of the, he's kind of like the star of our defense, being able to play in multiple positions. So, I do think it's a mistake that they didn't address the room, just because we have a lot of question marks. I also think that the Niners are in a good position to bring these guys back on friendly deals if they even exceed whatever their expectations may be. Okay. Um, you brought up a, a pretty good point there, Matt. Do you think that they decided that they could get away with not addressing it this year because they invested so heavily in their defensive line? I, I think that definitely pays a part of it. I don't think that there's been too many situations where you essentially have one starter in your entire secondary under contract beyond the current year. I think that's a very dangerous game to play, but I, you know, it, it's obvious that's what they're doing. We've never seen a situation where Jaquaski Tart, you know, Richard Sherman, Akella Witherspoon, K1 Williams, they're all free agents. Emmanuel Mosley, restricted free agent. The, these are all your guys. The only guy that actually plays who's under contract for any length of time is Jimmy Ward, and he's been injury prone his entire career. He just had a healthy year for the first time in, I don't know, since he was born. So to me, yeah, you can cover up those warts if you want to with your defensive line. You you can hope that the pressure, which, you know, is why they replaced Buckner with Kinlaw. You know, they filled that hole. They want to keep up that pressure and they want to get to the quarterback. And that's definitely, I would say that's definitely more important than having a great secondary. But at the same time, to let the entire secondary get into the last year of your contract. I mean, this is going to be a huge, huge issue in 2021. It doesn't matter how you slice it for 2020. 2021, it's going to be a, a gigantic thing that they're going to have to address. And then you have Kittle coming up on contract. You know, do you re sign Tart or do you let him walk? Do you re sign K1, who, even though he's limited to the slot, is one of the best slot corners in the NFL? You know, what do you do with those guys and what decision making goes into that? So for me, it's yeah, you can, you can let your defensive line cover things up, but that's only a temporary fix for a very leaky dam that they're going to have to address coming up very soon. Yeah, you know, the the kind of biggest thing that I had with that is that it's not like these were all top-graded corners. They didn't have the number one, two, three, four. You know, no, that's not how it worked. You know, Sherman played at a really high level, sure. Um, he's still liable out there. He can still be exposed. He's not the Sherman of, you know, old. That's for sure. He still is, is susceptible to getting burnt. He still has his issues. And just like Matt said, they benefited – very much from a very strong defensive line. And that's why they were putting up historic numbers for, you know, the better part of last season, you know, however long it was half the season. Um, I think people are reading into that a little bit too much and um, they feel a lot more comfortable and maybe the team does too. I don't know. Maybe they feel more comfortable based off of how the, the secondary performed last season. However, when you kind of break it down guy by guy, they're not, elite corners they're not very very elite uh safeties and to not even address it in the sense of like getting taking a late round flyer on a guy that may develop into somebody uh getting a guy that you could hope will learn stuff like that i i feel like they they kind of dropped the ball on this aspect and their infatuation of the defensive line may come back to bite them um, just like Matt said, it's very dangerous. Who knows if they all decide to walk? What is this team? Are they going to spend their first four picks in their secondary? Um, so there's a lot, a lot of questions that remain to be answered. Now, Anthony, I, I touched on a guy like, like, uh, or excuse me, I touched on the prospect of bringing in late round guys, flyers. Last year they drafted uh, Tim Harris out of Virginia, I believe. Are yep. they banking on him to have any sort of role in this defense? 
They have to if they're going to have him for another, what, three years because he got drafted last year. He's on a cheap contract. He was spoken highly of because he's a, he's a tall, lanky dude who can play zone very well. And I think he has all the traits to fit in this defense. But the thing is, is that can they bank on a dude who hasn't even played an NFL snap in the regular season and who's, who's basically coming off the IR? And I get that the story, the story for the Niners in a nutshell is that pluck a guy off the of IR and let him play. We've seen that happen. We're also banking, too, that they could bring back a guy like Jason Barrett on another cheap deal. Free agency. Yeah, he's, he's back. For, he's back. Yeah, so. They brought him back. Yeah, that that's the thing is that they have a lot of guys they can bank on. But it's just like Matt said, you're banking on the fact that if this defensive line can perform, can it overshadow average cornerback play? Average cornerback play also includes corners who haven't played such as Jason Barrett, who only played a few snaps, got burnt, and then got IR'd against the Steelers. I think then, that was our receiver's only touchdown for the season, too. Yeah, I think it's uh, Deontay <laughs> Johnson. <laughs> the, the point being, though, is that they're banking on a lot. And our good friend Stewart from Hive also believes that the cornerback room could be remodeled entirely because of how many people are walking. And the Niners covet guys who can play on cheap contracts for three or four years. And who knows what the salary cap is going to be in two years. So are they banking on guys like Tim Harris and Jason Barrett to really step up and fill a role that the other guys might leave out of? I think so. I think so. And that's the thing that scares me is that you have guys like Tavarius Moore who transitions to cornerback. It doesn't work out well. He moves to safety and he plays okay at safety. But the point being is that why would you draft a safety in the third round a couple of years ago to move him to corner? What what are they seeing with the cornerback room? And if they don't have any confidence in the cornerback room, which is why I think they like the defensive line so much, you got to figure that the confidence level for Tim Harris is either way higher than the expectations should be, or they just think he can fill in like a killer Witherspoon has been. And that's the biggest question regarding the team is that I do think they are banking on guys to – exceed expectations because of the line and just stay healthy too much. Okay. Uh, Matt, I kind of have a, a question for you here. Yeah. What's more likely they resign Witherspoon, they resign Mosley, or they resign them both? I think they're going to resign them both. Um, but to what Perry was saying, I, I the one thing I will say is that Harris, Harris wasn't really – injured last year uh they they ran out of room for him so they put him on ir to kind of stash him they knew he wasn't gonna they couldn't put him on practice squad he would have been snapped up he wasn't that's one of the things they really do with these young guys so he could come in and contribute on the other hand you know the defense is john lynch's baby you know it's it's john lynch and it's robert sala and they probably have the most say in who gets what in the draft and for me, I just think this is one of those situations kind of like John Elway in Denver with quarterbacks. And it's like you get a Hall of Fame caliber, you know, defensive back like John Lynch. And it's like, well, maybe he has the blind spot. You know, he he sees the intangible traits of, oh, this guy's tough. This guy's this. This guy's that. That reminds me of this. But it's not it doesn't really translate on the field because if you looked at their picks, the best defensive back pick that they have is a Kella Witherspoon. And I mean, again, we know what he is at this point. He's a very inconsistent corner who's going to give up a lot of big plays because he takes a lot of gambles and his head will, you know, be taken out of the game by mistakes. You know, he's very quick to jump on himself. Um, We saw that last year. Everybody was saying, Oh, he played so well before he got hurt. I don't know. I remember watching that Pittsburgh game when he got absolutely toasted on that slant route by Juju. You know, it took it to the house because he took a risk and tried to break up a ball late. That was already past him. And, you know, he ended up getting injured later in that game, so we kind of forgot about that. It was a great comeback or whatever, but they might not be that great at drafting corner. What they are good at is identifying defensive line talent, Solomon Thomas notwithstanding. Um, that They've built an incredible defensive line, so in, in that regard, they're hoping that the defensive line kind of covers up for the corners. Yeah, 100%. I think that that's, that's obvious. Um Anthony, I kind of have a similar question to what I asked Matt. If Sherman, you, you touched on him possibly moving to safety. Uh, you or Matt, I don't remember who exactly. Would that help or hurt this defense if within the next, you know, say they re-sign Sherman um, and he moves to safety, does that help or hurt the secondary? 
Matt would know this. It'd be like it'd be like moving your thirty three year old cornerback to safety in Madden with ninety nine awareness and eighty five speed. <laughs> it'd be uh, <laughs> it no nah, it it would help the team a lot. I think being a being but would a he do it? That's the thing. That's it, the it, real yeah. question. He's talked about doing it wh- yeah, at the end of his about career, doing it, but where he's gonna want money. You know, Sherman is a stubborn dude who's gonna want his money. He got paid by the Niners, but if he has an even decent season once again, he's gonna want to get paid, and I don't think the Niners are gonna be willing. But hypothetically, if Sherman were to say move to safety, I think it would benefit the team in the sense that he's a smart corner. He primarily plays one side of the field, but there's no way in hell that he doesn't know how to read a whole field as a safety. In my opinion, he would kind of be like that Eric Weddle at that point in his career where you're not expecting too much from him, but you have a really smart guy in the back who will prevent big plays from happening. And even at his age, I wouldn't be surprised if Sherman put his body on the line to just help the defense. I mean, we saw it when he tore his Achilles with Seattle. We saw it when, sadly, when Garoppolo tore his ACL that same game. He... Tyreek Hill kind of had him burned and the ball was slightly underthrown, but he was still able to catch up to Tyreek and break it up. The point being is that, and I get that was a couple years ago, but the point being is that you see that dog mentality in him and you see that he wouldn't want to take that Darrell Revis type curve and drop off an island. So even if he does move to safety, I think it would transition for him very well. And I think it would, it could probably help the team in the long run considering that tart, tart might walk. Jimmy Ward can't stay healthy up until this season. And you have a very capable guy in Sherman who just knows how to play the game of football. Yeah, he would be that single high guy. Um, although he's not afraid to tackle, that's for sure. He's a very physical corner. So I think he would be- best fit in that single high ball hawk kind of role where he could play center field scan, read receivers, read quarterbacks, kind of figure out where it goes if he was willing to do it. Yep. Well, that remains to be seen. One thing is for sure, guys. Go check out 49ershive.com. Uh, we just launched our latest Come At Me Bro t-shirt in uh, celebration of Joe Staley's career. Right now, you can use code JS74 for 15% off your purchase. Make sure you go and check that out right now. Uh, links will be in the description. That's going to do it for us today, guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Niner News on 49ers Hive. Make sure you follow us on Twitter. Our handles will be below. Comment your thoughts. Do you think the 49ers uh, definitely should have addressed the secondary position? Did they make the right choice by not doing it? And also, subscribe, turn notifications on so you don't miss a single video just like this. Thanks, guys.